What up players, it's Wallboss Tab in this mud. Today we're gonna finish painting our Ultramarines Space Marine. I'm so happy I got it done. Here are the colors that you need. We go back with McCrag Blue. We add Calgar Blue. Fenrisian Gray. Um, 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 um. What else did we use? Rackhart Flesh. Mephiston Red. Agrax Earthshade, Evil Sun Scarlet, Wild Rider Red, and for the islands I used Tamiya Clear Red and Ceramite White, but as you can see when I go through it I'm, I kind of prefer my old method of using the, um, using just the red colors to build up. But I guess it looks okay now that I look back on it. <clears throat> Runefang Steel. Abaddon Black. And I believe, oh no, Pallid Witch Flesh to highlight up the purity seal there. I also used my Micron Arts Pen .005 in black. Uh, .005, there you go. And for the transfers, I used... Microsol and or Microset and Microsol. So hope you guys enjoy watching the video and uh, leave any comments or feedback below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned as we go on to the next Legion in the first founding list of of original legions of the twenty original first founding legions. The I don't even know what they are. Thousand Suns, Death Guard, one of those. Hey gang, welcome back to my How to Paint the Space Marine, Ultramarines, the 13th Legion. We are going to continue today where we left off, so let's get started. McCrag Blue. By now your Drakenhof Nightshade should have dried. If not, if you are playing this video right after you watched the first one, then I suggest you hang out and let that sucker dry because Drakenhof Nightshade can be very, as with any wash, if you get your acrylic paints on it while it's not dry yet they will bleed it will be horrible all the girls will laugh at you um, it just will not be a good time so let your Drakenhof nightshade dry and then come back to it going but I've <laughs> made this horrible mistake of painting some McCrag blue over the magazine by accident so I'm gonna take some lead belcher and fix that up right now So I'm listening, I, now that I've got an I, iPhone, I've been just kind of like listening to a lot of stuff like the podcasts. Uh, there's, a, there's an app now where you can, <laughs> I'm so behind the curve, so for those of you technically savvy people out there who've had this for a while, I apologize, I have not. Um, but there's an app where you can go to the, I don't know if it's iTunes or whatever, wherever, but you can download all these or, or subscribe to all these podcasts and then just follow along with them and uh, it'll update you every time there's a new one out you can go and and upload them listen to them have them on your phone all the time uh, I love it I think it's great and so I'm just listening to I, I think I subscribe to like nine podcasts about Warhammer or you know the hobby and uh, I was listening to this one, Hitting on Threes, it's called, and in their latest episode so far, as of this taping, they have an interview at the very beginning with a chap called Greg, and I'm talking to him, and, and I'm just kind of listening while I'm working on my hobby and stuff, and uh, he talks about 
how YouTube is getting to be a big thing now. And um, I mean, I remember before YouTube, I would look up something like non-metallic metals or or how to paint or how to highlight, you know, very simple techniques. And you, you would go to these, it would lead you to articles on painting websites. And a lot of them, like the articles that I would find for how to paint or how to do non-metallic metals, very, very complex technical um, kinds of articles where it would show pictures and describe color theory and light and reflective light and this and that and uh, although the articles themselves were very good I know that as a young hobbyist at the time I was just lost a lot of times I could not understand because you know I'm a I'm kind of like an auditory learner as well as a visual learner where I find that it's a lot easier for me to absorb and process information if I can see it in action and so when I started my YouTube channel, it was just to motivate myself to finish this dwarf project that I had taken on as a commission. But I realized that as I was making more videos, and as I started producing these uh, painting tutorials, that I wanted to help those people like myself who were auditory learners and visual learners at the same time. People who would like to see how I do a particular highlight or how to do a particular piece on a model that that has been giving them trouble and I think that's what YouTube has been so so good about in in the past lately now if I had a camera that could autofocus I wouldn't need to worry at all I wouldn't have to worry about uh, Igor messing up the camera angles but as it is I'm having to always double check with the viewfinder that he's Operating the camera correctly so as not to um, frustrate any of my viewers out there. So I'm listening to this podcast and uh, Greg is talking about YouTube and then he mentions me by name and I thought that was fantastically awesome. I don't think I've ever heard my name being mentioned uh, or heard of people talking to me outside of uh, you know my subscribers and people who leave comments on my website so or on my YouTube channel so anyways thank you Greg uh, if you still watch my videos then you hear this thank you for mentioning me in that interview uh, thank you to everybody out there who spread the good word of Warboss Tay and my channel I mean I really appreciate you guys out there who um, talk about me or find some use in my, my videos uh, I'm always excited to tell my lady boss whenever I have news like that like I'll say something <laughs> like hey babe they just somebody in in Sweden just said he really likes my channel and then she'll get excited and, and we'll go and celebrate and eat lots of chocolate ice cream together and she'll be like wait why are we eating chocolate ice cream again I should be on a diet why are you making me eat chocolate ice cream and I'll say because this guy in Sweden says my channel's cool and then she'd be like, oh, right, pass me the syrup. Now I'm hungry for chocolate ice cream. <clears throat> so, McCrag Blue. Beautiful color for, uh, for basing your ultramarines. You just want to make sure that you thin it appropriately on your wet palette. And that when you apply it, try to keep towards the middle of the armor plate sections as you're going out towards the edges. This is one, one thing that I, I screwed up a lot when I first started painting. I would just paint the whole shoulder pad, get to the, uh, the rim, the borders here, and just paint it so, to make sure that I didn't miss a spot. And what that ends up doing is it makes it harder for you when you're painting up the, uh, when you're trying to, trying to get to the creases and crevices later. So just be careful of that. Wet palette is like my best friend. I thought I was your best friend. No, you are my best manservant, Igor. Oh. <laughs> 
This one guy left a comment on my channel and he was like, Hey man, painting videos are cool, but uh, it's kind of annoying how you talk to yourself in your different voices. And I was like, well, you know, I don't do this for the money. If somebody paid me Games Workshop, then I would make painting videos all day long where I just kept my mouth shut and I just said every time I used a new color, now you layer with this color in a totally monotone and servitor-like voice, but I do this as a hobby and uh, as such, I think I'd go crazy if I didn't humor myself. So, that's where Igor and the boys come in. Oh, thank you, Monster. So there's your ultramarine up to this point. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can see how he looks. Very nice. Um, next we're going to take Rune Fang Steel and we're going to highlight up the silver pieces. Yeah, if you've got the old Mithril Silver, that works just as well. So, looking down at my model, I know that the light is going to be hitting it at a certain angle. So I've taken to highlighting where I know the light will hit, leaving the shade known oil in the lower areas. You don't have to do this, uh, I just like to do it. I also like to paint the slides on my bolters in my throw silver or rune fang steel, that way it pops out to the viewer when he's looking at it. on the clip. This area, uh, the join in between, or right inside the backpack is particularly tricky, so you want to just make sure you work on the point of your brush before attempting it. Runefang Steel is a beautiful color though, I do have to admit that. Seems to go on a little bit cleaner than the old Mithril Silver did. Could be just me, but um, that's my impression of it. Dun 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 the impression that I get. Um, okay, now we're on the backpack, so I'm just gonna lightly drag the Runefang steel over all of the hard edges, the flat surfaces and the squared pointed edges of the turbines here, and I'm just going to drag the brush over the top of the rim of these exhaust ports. The thing with highlights is you do too much and um, it doesn't look like a highlight as much as a base color. It looks pretty garish, so something that I learned early, you don't want to do too much. Also, keep a separate cup of water for your metallics. That way the pigment, the shiny metallic pigment, reflective pigment doesn't get on everything else you're doing. Calgar Blue is the next color we're going to use. This is a highlight color. So the thing you want to keep in mind is that Macrag Blue is the color that we want to see overall. Calgar Blue is the highlight we want to see on the edges of the armor plates. So you want to put, put it on the tip of your brush, wipe most of it off, and then when you feather it on, you don't want to see a thick line of paint. A 
That's why we thin our paints on a wet palette. Focus on anywhere where the uh, plates kind of intersect or overlap on each other, like here on the boot. And um, you just want to accentuate those lines. The great thing also about a wet palette is that you put your paint on it and on the parchment paper of your wet palette it will stay it will stay wet and it will stay usable. So you can keep going back to it. And for those of you uh, novices out there who do not know what a wet palette is, it's simply a plastic container. You can use a small Tupperware container or the clamshell of a single model pack and fill the bottom with water and then put a little layer of parchment paper on top. And then when you paint on it, or you put paint on it, you can mix the paint, the paint stays uh, usable. It's like a painter's best friend. Yeah, so I haven't really done a Fluff Hunters video for the Ultramarines yet. Still trying to pick and choose what I want to say because they're so... Uh, they're so iconic. I mean, they're the... They're the poster boys of Warhammer 40,000. So... I'm uh, looking through all the wealth of information from various... Wiki sites. The Lexicanum, 40k Wiki. And I suggest that you guys all do the same if you want to for my Fluff Hunters video. I'm just going to pull up the pieces of information that I find most interesting. Uh, but if you've read the Horus Heresy books or the Uriel Ventress books on the Ultramarines, then <laughs> you're going to be a lot ahead of the curve than I am. It's funny, in the, uh, in the book Vulcan Lives, the Primarchs sometimes mention Mar uh, not Marnius Calgar, Rebut Gulimin, the Primarch of the Ultramarines, and they, they always call him an Empire Builder and a uh, tactical, tactical genius. Like his his talent. If the war, if uh, the emperor, when he built his his primarchs, had gifted each one with something that made them different from the rest, then the uh, the primarch of the ultramarines was known as the like the statesman, the the empire builder. I guess he would be compared to like Caesar. Caesar the statesman rather than the warrior or the warlord. It's funny because it talks about um, Vulcan, the primarch of the salamanders, as being physically the strongest of all his brothers, the largest and the strongest. It talks about um, Perturabo as being the one, uh, like the gifted architect. If Rogel Dorn is the one who's really gifted at doing sieges and breaking breaking down cities. Then uh, Perturabo, the Primarch of the Iron Warriors, was something more like a, uh, a builder. Well, there's always some back and forth on that. Like, who's the, who's the builder? Is it Rogaldorn? Is he the defender of the Empire, of the Imperium? And he's the one who defends the, 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 the Imperial Palace. So people say that he's the builder and he's a defender. And uh, Perturabo is the, the like the siege master, the one who is good at breaking sieges and stuff. But it goes either way. If you can break, you can build them, right? <clears throat> uh, but yeah, Perturabo builds this this prison for for Vulcan to 
be used by Conrad Kurtz. I don't think these are spoilers since uh, it's, it's stated pretty early on in the novel, but I mean, it's the book is so interesting, you guys should go read it. It has nothing to do really with the Ultramarines, um, but it's the first in what looks to be like a series of books. And in the next one, I think, the next book in the series of Vulcan Lives, I think the Ultramarines are going to be a little bit more prominent. Since it looks like events in the novel carry the storyline to the realm of Ultramar. Ah, that's another thing a lot of people are often confused or mistaken about. Uh, the Ultramarines were named that because the system that they come from is called Ultramar. Uh, some people also say it's because they are the most ultra of the Marines. And there are a lot of people out there who refute that and say, uh, no, it's because they come from Ultramar. Discuss, what do you guys think? All right, I'll shut up now. Painting over the vents here, just using the flat of my brush so I don't have to go over each and every single one. When you can, try to get the paint on the flat tip, or on the very tip of your brush, and then just use it to, to slowly drag the highlight out. If it seems like the uh, McCrag blue is still a little bit too dark, then just go back over it one more time because Drakenhoff Nightshade, unfortunately, is a very dark color. One more area you wanna think about going over is the very tip, or the apex of your shoulder pads. And all you need is a single line It doesn't even have to be perfect, because I'll show you what, what you do. Make that single line, and <clears throat> even if it's not perfect, all you have to do is go back to your McCrag blue and clean it up on the sides. So here, you can see the sides of my highlight are very sloppy and very messy. Oh, it's like I'm 13 again. I'm just taking my McCrag Blue and starting from the center of the shoulder pad, I'm working my way out and I'm just feathering and brushing the highlights. See, this is something the Citadel Games Workshop's been releasing like eBooks and they don't show you any of these like techniques that I'm showing you. So I know that if I was a young painter or an inexperienced painter rather, I wouldn't, I would have no idea how to get these highlights. Like what kind of brush stroke would you have to use? How do you keep from from uh, messing messing up? So with these fine highlights, you start from where the the flat of the the like the biggest surface area is. So in this case, the center of the shoulder pad, and you just work your way back in. You can do this for all of the all of the. Calgar blue highlights. If there's any you see that look really thick and unnatural, like here on the butt plates, I painted them too thick. I got too overzealous. It was like a word bearer with a paintbrush. You just go back with your McCrag blue and you blend the highlight so that you keep the thick highlight or the thin highlight, the line highlight on the edge. But then you kind of cover up the center of it with your base color. Boom, instant awesome. <clears throat> Last color, Fenrisian Gray. Now this, especially, you want to take care of. You want to put it on your, you know, on your wet palette, and you want to spread it out so it doesn't, the paint doesn't clump up. And then you want to wipe out the majority of the paint 
that you use to mix onto your napkin. Now you might think, oh, what a waste of paint, I don't wanna do that. But the uh, importance of having brush control, like maximum brush control, is what is your objective. If I had my brush completely loaded with paint right now, and I tried to do this, then it would come off and bleed and look really, really horrible. So maximum control of your brush. And we're just really hitting the top most parts we're tricking the eye of the uh, viewer to notice certain parts more than others. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to focus my attentions on just points in the corners or areas that I think would hit the light strongly a certain way. By not highlighting all of the raised areas, you are creating the illusion that the light reflects off certain areas more than others, and that is, uh, that's what we want. I think that's the goal of highlighting, right? Fool. Fool the viewer into thinking the light is hitting your model at a certain angle illusion. That's something Games Workshop doesn't tell painters enough. You don't want to highlight everything you just painted. You're picking and choosing with each layer of highlight that you go. You're bringing up only what you want the viewer to focus on. So when we shaded all of the McCrag blue, we used McCrag blue on everything except the shadows when highlighting it back up. We were picking and choosing where the highlights were. When we were highlighting with uh, Calgar Blue, we were picking and choosing. And now again, we're picking and choosing. Corners, edges, high areas. <clears throat> Ta-da! Okay, we're gonna take some uh, Mephiston Red now, and we're gonna paint the wax seal of any purity seals your Marine may have on his armor. I don't have uh, the, the new Tactical Squad built up, so I'm not sure if they have them like the old the old kit used to, but um, the old kit used to be able to trim them 
I clip them off of the, the sprue. I have to check, not sure. Okay, then we're gonna take some Rekarth flesh and paint it onto the parchment. We're gonna let that dry for a while. Meanwhile, we're going to paint in the eye lenses. There are a lot of different ways to paint them. I'm seeing a lot of new ones now, uh, but I'm gonna go with this, the old school method. One of the new ways says that you paint the eye lenses in white, and then um, and then paint like a glaze over it. In fact, you know what I'm going to do. I'm gonna try a new method I've never tried before. The old method is you paint on the corn red and the fist on red, and then you dot it. I'm gonna try, it's not the, the glaze method, but I'm gonna try painting ceramite white into the eye lenses. And then I'm gonna try putting some Tamiya clear red on it. I actually heard about this technique from one of my viewers a long time ago, never really got to try it. Um, but well, first time for everything. The trick is that Ceramite White is such a glaring, glaringly bright color that you do not want to make any mistakes. You don't want it to go on too thickly. You don't want it to end up on the nose like it did just there. Ugh. That's right. Experiments. Just gonna fix it up with some Calgar blue. Okay, let's get back to that. <clears throat> Rune Fang Steel is the color we're going to use to paint up the uh, gold, highlight the gold. I remember the first time I saw somebody use Mithril Silver, the old Rune Fang steel, to paint up gold, right, to highlight gold, and I thought, what? That makes no sense, why would you do that? And it's, again, it's another optical illusion. When you feather the ends, in this case, the wings, tips, then it creates the illusion of light being reflected. It's not for everyone. I know it wasn't for me when I first started uh, painting. Basically, when you highlight gold with silver, the aim is to paint the edges. Use it as like a like an edge highlight rather than a rather than a highlight that you would use normally. You only want to get the edges. So you get something like that. When painting the, or when highlighting the shoulder pads, you wanna only, only kiss the inside rims and the outer edges rather than painting through the middle. Like other highlights, you would, you would kind of paint through the center of whatever you're painting, whatever you're highlighting. But with this, we're trying to highlight only the outside. If you mess up, you can go back with uh, Gehenna's Gold would be a safe highlight to fall back on. I 
You're not really meant to see it. It's supposed to just catch your eye if you're looking at something else. You don't really want to see it too much, so that might be a little too... Oh well, that's right. Forget it. Forget about it. I like it. It's fine. Alright, I'm gonna get my Tamiya Clear Red X20 Shepherd. Shake it up. And then... I'm going to get it just on the tip of your brush. Ooh, here we go. Exciting, never tried this technique before. Day of firsts, never painted up a space marine, never did. To me a clear red for eye lenses. Who would have thought? It is okay, it's glossy, so it gives you that kind of glossy look, um, and it is red. I think for myself though, I, I prefer the, the, old, the old method, but just using straight acrylic colors and, not, uh, and building it up. Um, not really sure if I like it, so. Let me just tell you what my old method is, my preferred method. I would use Mephiston Red, and then a Wild Rider Red, and then dot the edge with a little dot of white to kind of create the illusion of transparency. I'm just going back over with my Calgar Blue, trying to clean up the uh, little bit of go back over with my crag. That's fine. It kind of looks like, ooh, you know what, if I was painting Night Lords, the bleeding eyes, this would be perfect. Because it's, it's reflective, it's glossy, it kind of looks like blood. Uh, with my ultramarines though, I don't really think it fits. But there you go, there you have it. All right, uh, by now, the purity seal should be dry, so we're gonna paint it up with Agrax Earthshade. I'm gonna paint up the base, and I think that is about all we have to do. So I'm also gonna get the transfer sheet, Space Marine's transfer sheet, and what we'll do is we'll uh, apply some transfers. All right, next we're gonna take our Microsol and our Micro Set. These are the two paints we're gonna be using. And we're gonna start with Micro Set. I always get these mixed up because I always think Micro Set is second to set the transfer, but I actually want micro set first. I'm just painting it over the entire area. And I, I'm i gonna do a separate uh, tutorial for applying transfers on um, uh, codex, codex uh, adherent chapters, I guess is the way to call them. So this will just be the Ultramarines chapter. I'm taking my tweezers now. And I've got the ultramarine symbol cut out and ready for application. So I'm dipping it into a fresh cup of water. You always want to use fresh cup of water. You don't want to use the water you've been using for the past half hour. And after a couple seconds, it should be ready. So I'm going to take it out. I've got it on my finger here. You're just going to take the transfer and slide it off the backing paper be easier if you get it by the corner that your dominant hand is 
cable to use. So I'm getting it from the upper right corner because I'm just planning on putting it right on. If you are left-handed, you probably want to grab it from the left corner. All right, this is where it's really easy for a lot of people to screw up their transfers. Um, what you want to do is take your micro saw next, and the red container, and paint that, dab it onto the transfer. Together, micro saw and micro set will allow you to put transfers onto uneven surfaces. I don't see why Games Workshop does not have their own product like this, since Space Marines and their chapter symbols and badges are like so, you know, uh, iconic. These chapter badges, it just makes no sense that they wouldn't rip it off. Like they ripped off PVA glue, plastic glue, super glue. They ripped off every other product out there on the hobby market. It uh, makes no sense why they haven't yet figured out how to do a product like Microsol and Microset, which melts the transfer onto the uneven surface. You don't really have to move it around as much as I'm doing, I'm just kind of kind of a perfectionist when it comes to ah, to being in the perfect spot. Alright, that's <laughs> that's good enough for me, so if you if you went away then you can come back now. I'm going to uh, use while we wait for that to dry, I'm going to use where is it? <laughs> uh, not Wazdaka Red, what am I thinking? Evil Sun Scarlet, that's the brighter red one. Evil Sun's Scarlet to highlight up the wax purity seal. So yeah, if you want to do the right shoulder pad, then just stay tuned. I'll do a follow-up video very soon. And um, other people can join that one, people who don't paint Ultramarines but have a Codex Adherent chapter. For the parchment itself, we're going to go back to rack hard flesh. It's funny because the um, all of the painting guides show that you paint on the scroll work, but I have never been one to paint on my scroll work very well. It always comes out looking really strange, so Wild Rider Red last. So that's why I use my Micron Arts pen. It's just, uh, this makes sense to me. If I was good at painting freehand, I'd do a lot more of it. Oh, I was reading the Codex Space Marines, trying to just get some inspiration. There is so much cool stuff on it. Um, specifically, like, how, to, how Space Marines get chosen and trained, and um, it's unbelievable. Pallid Witch Flesh, I mean, I remember reading in the third, third edition, like the third edition uh, rule book about how space marines have all this 
all these crazy implants and whatnot. Oh! Master! Master, you're getting a beauty call! Most all the ladies are calling you. All right, just got off the phone with my lady boss. Take me to dinner. And I've uh, given it a little bit of time to dry, so we're going to take a little bit more Microsol and paint it right back over. And then we're going to take our Micron Arts Pen .005 and write some script on the bottom. I started to painting, I started taking to painting the bases or the rims of the bases for my 40k miniatures in black. I think it's uh, better to see the paint jobs on it. Now if you've got like a black figure, like a uh, Raven Guard, Iron Hands, or Black Templars, then you might not want to do that, but it seems to work for me. All right, so there is the Purity Seal. And there you have it, folks, how to paint in Ultramarines. Stay tuned if you want to see how I would apply transfers onto the right shoulder pad that designates squad and unit markings, or company markings. I guess it's unit markings. And I'm also going to do a video on how to um, decorate or enhance the look of your Space Marine to make him seem more fancy and ornate by doing things like um, painting the knee pads, giving extra detailing, um, just to bring it up from the, the normal line battle brother. So thanks for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next video.